In this video, I want to cover the basics for a split body setup, and especially for first person shooters, why you may want to do this setup instead of going the traditional true first person route, because what you end up with is a result that is the same visually, but much more pleasing and much, much, much easier to work with when it comes down to animation and just general tweaking. So mm -hmm. to begin, uh, let's just start basics. So here I have my third person mesh. I'm just going to go ahead and hide it, get rid of it before the example. Let me plug that back in so I, we can actually see everything working right. And I'm going to set owner no C on all the first person parts to false so that way other clients can see it. The only thing that I have checked is owner no C and that is just for the head. So that way our head is not visible to ourselves. So let me launch with two clients. And as you can see here, everything looks fine and dandy. Everything looks pretty good. The only thing that's wrong right now is the head's not tilting when we aim, and that's just due to the uh, animation setup, because it's not meant to work like this. As you can see, I'm running different animations. I'm running animations that are supposed to be for the first person, not third person. So ignore those. Same thing with the clipping. So what I am referring to is this mesh is broken up into three parts that we're looking at. So he has a separate head, separate torso, and a separate lower body, just like we do. So if we look down, that's better yet on this guy, we can see we have a pair of legs. They're animating and all that. However, we are also avoiding the problem that you see a lot of the time, where when you're moving around and all that kind of stuff, you have issues with head bob, and that is due to the animation. Now, most people that are going to be asking this question usually run into that problem because they don't exactly, they're not taking the time to separate kind of everything up. Or they're just using straight marketplace assets without doing any work to kind of circumvent it. So, for example, what you'll see a lot of people doing is they will use ALS for true first person. And they'll just use it straight as that way. They're not going to add really anything onto it. So what happens is they end up running animations on their character that has a lot of head bob in it. So they'll attach like their camera to their head, for example. And then if we watch the animation, whatever bone they have on the head, it's going to be bouncing all around and all that stuff. And it's really just not giving a pleasant experience. Because remember, what you see in first person view, all that camera shake and all that kind of stuff, that leads to one, just unpleasant gameplay, two, a lot of people get nauseous from it. I'm not one of those, thankfully. But if you are, it's, you know, it's not pleasant. And that's why you, oftentimes they'll have head bob sliders where people can just crank them all the way down if it affects them. Well, another thing, if you're going this route, you don't have control over that unless you make an animation where you attach your camera directly to a dedicated bone and you animate out any movement from the animation for that head. So that's where you're kind of stuck. So here's how my setup is currently set. Uh, this is for my plugin. For my first person mesh, I just have my torso. That is all it is. And then underneath of that, so everything else is the children, I have my pair of legs. And I also have my head. Now they're all in the same skeleton. No biggie there. Now what is different is let's start with the mesh and the head. So these are specifically for shadows. So if I click on the head here, we have owner no C selected. But on the same time, we also have, if we search for hidden, we have hidden shadow checked. So even if this mesh is hidden, it is going to project a shadow. So let me go into full screen here. And if I look down and around, you can see I have a full body shadow as well. Everything looks correct accordingly to what it actually is. And that's what we want. Now, when it comes down to third person, or actually, let me continue real quick. This also gives you the ability to do things like easily swap out parts. So if you wanted to have a torso that had a different shirt, no shirt, whatever, you can do that very easily. You just swap out the mesh. Same thing with the pants. Same thing with the head. That's really all you have to do. Now, when it comes down to third person, it's pretty much the same concept. So if you know you're not going to have a, you're not going to be changing out parts of the character, like you're not going to be having any sort of clothing system or anything like that, like what I'm doing here, 
I just have a full body. So it's one mesh and it's the entire body, nothing more. There's no, it's not split up or anything in any way. And that gives us, well, a good third person view. So again, let me check on, only owner C for the first person stuff real quick. And what's going on here is other clients are going to be seeing that third person mesh with its own set of animations. All right, I forgot to plug this back in. So if we look here, as you can see, it's got its own set of animations. The stock is actually positioned on the shoulder where it's supposed to be, and everything works accordingly. So we can have a set of animations that look good in first person, as well as a set of animations that look good for the third person. Now the only thing that I really had to do to tweak these was I make the first person animations first, and then I duplicate them all and modify them so they look good in the third person view. For example, these reloads are slightly different between first and third person. Because if we were to look at this with the first person animation playing, the firearm would be positioned right in the dead center or very close to the chest. And it would also be pushed out farther, whereas this is right on the shoulder like so. So that allows you to have separate layers of animation. So generally as a whole, I recommend this setup over a general true first person setup. I guess you could call this one just fake true first person. I don't know what you'd actually call it. But like I said and showed, you get a lot more control over it. In the end, it's a lot simpler to set up. You don't have to worry about head bob or anything like that. And you get to run and have a much cleaner setup for your animation blueprint. For example, I have an animation blueprint running, or animation sense and graph, whatever you want to call it, running just for my torso. It's FP character. Click on my legs. I have another one. It's a completely different animation blueprint running for FP character underscore lower body. So they're running separate animations. Now for the head. In order to keep the head in sync and actually play the correct animations with the body, what we have to do is let me actually, hopefully we'll be able to see it. If I uncheck owner no see, we should be able to actually see the hat. Yep, we can see the hat at the top there. As you can see, it's following along nice and how it's supposed to. Now if I, let me go ahead and disconnect that real quick and see if it'll do what I think it's going to do, which it did. As you can see, as I lean back, the head is not following with the rest of the mesh. It's not doing any of the animation or animation or anything like that. It's not doing anything at all. So Unreal provides this nice little function for us called set master pose component. Now, if I reconnect that back up, as you can see, like before, the head follows correctly. So what this is doing is it takes in our head as the target, and then it takes in the mesh that we want to follow along with. So because my head is of the exact same skeleton, we don't even have to set an animation blueprint or anything for it. What's going to happen is the head is going to start playing and animating with the mesh that we pass in. So in my case, the torso, this guy right here. So it's going to follow along and play the animations. So that way it's kind of, think of it like being in sync. So you have separate parts that are technic, well, they're separate skeletal meshes, but they're playing and animating together. So that's what this allows us to do. And it's very simple as you can see, but that is for the sole purpose of shadows. At least that's why I'm doing it. So I'll go ahead and un, or I'll hide the head again. So that way we don't have to worry about seeing it. And if we look at the shadow, as you can see, the head, <laughs> he looks a little special today. You can see the head's not animating with it. It's not following. So that's why you would do something like that as well. But, well, let me rephrase that. That's the kind of the fix that you would have for that. And as you can see now, the head is playing the exact same animations, including procedural, that the rest of the body is. 
So you can think of it like the head is now running the same animation instance and graph as the torso. So think of it like it takes the two meshes and it joins it together. So that was a lot of kind of re-explaining. Yeah, re-explaining. Uh, hopefully that kind of made sense. But this is kind of the setup that I would recommend if you're going to be aiming for a like a full body where you can look down and see your legs and actually have them animate and all that kind of stuff. This is the route that I would recommend that you take. One, much simpler to work with once you have it initially set up. Two, in my opinion, it's a lot cleaner. Three, allows you to swap out parts. And four, if you wanted to, you could run ALS just on the legs. And you wouldn't have to worry about anything else. So you would get all the benefits that come with ALS for locomotion. And they would only be applied to the lower body. So the legs here. It would not influence the torso at all. So you wouldn't get any of that annoying head bob effect or anything like that. And then for your third person mesh, you can do whatever with it. It doesn't really matter, obviously, because it's not going to influence your first person perspective at all. It's not going to bob your camera around or anything like that. So you can just grab marketplace assets, throw them in there, and call it a day. So... That is all I really have for you. I hope this kind of gave you some insight on how people set up these kind of systems to where they have multiple bodies or multiple parts to their characters. And that's going to be all. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you're curious about where you can find this plugin, there will also be a link to that in the description down below as well. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That is also linked down below. And I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.